A big week of developments in Georgia politics, including that ever interesting governor's race. Our Jeff Hollinger and NBC's Chuck Todd break it all down. Former Senator David Perdue, now a candidate for Georgia governor, will make two Metro Atlanta campaign stops over the weekend as he hopes to build momentum in his primary challenge of Governor Kemp. The governor, meanwhile, made news this week by saying that he will push for a state law to expand the gun rights of all Georgians. Joining me, Chuck Todd, the moderator of NBC's Meet the Press. And gun rights, Chuck, look like it's going to be a big part of the primary campaign here in Georgia. Is there any opening for David Perdue on this issue or, or any others as he faces really a, a very arduous task in trying to unseat a sitting governor? There are, before, before the sort of Donald Trump bizarre claims about the 2020 election were out there, there were two issues that you could use, or three issues that you could use to animate Republican primary voters. Abortion, guns, and immigration. I, I don't think there's much to be done on abortion that's sitting in the Supreme Court. There's not much Purdue or Kemp, I think, can somehow out conservative each other on, on that. Uh, there's still room on guns. I ultimately think, though, Purdue's running because Trump wants him to run. I don't think you're going to make this about anything else other than that. I, 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 you know, I'm skeptical of a one-issue campaign in a primary working, but at this point, what else is it? There's really no discernible ideological difference between David Perdue and Brian Kemp. Yeah. Okay? None at all. You and I both know this. There's yeah. only one reason Perdue's running, this bizarre, over, over Trump's bizarre mythology about, about the 2020 election. My guess is Perdue doesn't want to make that the issue. Um, because it's awkward and either this Kemp, but I, I, I don't see how it's I, I don't see how it's decided by anything else other than Trump and that. Here in Atlanta yesterday on Thursday, a memorial for former Senator Johnny Isaacs and really another reminder as I was listening to the eulogies from an assortment of people of how different things are. I mean, here you have a Republican senator being honored as a bipartisan lawmaker on the one year anniversary of what happened at the U.S. Capitol. I mean, Johnny Isaacs into politics is like the wishbone offense to football. It just seems like another day. And perhaps obsolete. Um, that's too bad. Uh, and, and I don't know if, if that comes back. I mean, you know, there, it used to be, if you got elected to, to, to Congress, your job was you did, you, you, you wanted to be a part of every piece of legislation, even if you didn't eventually vote for it, because maybe you wanted to make it either more liberal or more conservative, depending on which side of the aisle you were. And Isaacson was the type of guy that says, okay, you're gonna, that bill's going to pass. Well, let me see if I can reshape this part about it. The fact that, that the art of that type of political back and forth is gone uh, is something that is why I think our legislative branches on all levels are so broken. Meet the Press Air Sunday morning at 10 o'clock right here on 11 Alive. Chuck, thanks.